Uh, well, as you can see uh, the title, from the title of my presentation, the emphasis is on the second part rather than the first part of the theme of our, our workshop. Because I felt that so much has been said about the first part and so little remains, so, so, so much remains to be said about the second part. Uh, hopefully this session will, uh, as uh, Tim uh, mentioned, come out with some concrete recommendations how to go forward. Uh, and also I think it, it jives in with the opening statement and the concluding statement of Professor uh, Sachs, uh, the scientific and the negotiating aspects as he, as he pointed them out. This one deals with uh, more with the negotiating rather than scientific aspects and also the role that science academies have played in Africa and could play in the future also in uh, impacting on, on policy. Uh, this is a broad outline of my, of my brief intervention. Uh, I'll begin with the triple alliance of uh, science, academies, and uh, policy. Then I, have, I make a certain, certain number of qualifications or uh, uh, seeking your intervention there. Uh, a brief overview of Ethiopian Academy of Sciences, which I am representing here. Uh, and the various issues that are raised by African academies of sciences that impinge or that impact, uh, that have relevance to the issues that we have been discussing the last uh, three days. Uh, this is a very crude, uh, if you wish, representation of the three, the trinity of science, academies, and policy. Uh, we know what science is, and we know what policy is, Academies occupy a median role, a median role between the two, and they act as a, an agent of translation of social science into, into, into policy. Uh, very much along the lines of Michael Clegg, uh, I would say that academies have this uh, very convenient position of partaking of both worlds. Most, most of the members of academies come from the scientific community. Uh, at the same time, they do have quite a good access to policy makers. In the Ethiopian case, uh, uh, sometimes we discover some of the, the ministers and so on are actually our, our students, so we, we have a possibility to interact with them intimately. It does not mean that they follow everything that we tell them, but at least they uh, approach us with, with, the, with the understanding, with understanding and with, uh, with the belief that we don't really have any hidden uh, political, political agenda. So uh, this is the role that academics can play in translating science in a meaningful package, packaging the, the science to the, for the benefit of policymakers, so that policymakers would implement the scientific recommendations and uh, uh, findings. So what, uh, what I'm going to follow uh, is uh, really to identify certain issues that African academies of sciences have identified and have taken positions on them after a careful examination and have tried to convey them to, to policymakers. Before that, I have a few qualifiers. I think the sciences, when we say science, it is the sciences uh, uh, team uh, was very passionate about the interdisciplinarity. I'm equally passionate. And the, uh, the organization that I represent, the Chippen Academy of Sciences, has also been very passionate about this. It has always said that all the sciences, including the humanities, and the social sciences have a, a bearing on the resolution of uh, national and, and regional problems. Uh, you, can, you can just mention a few issues like nutrition, uh, climate change, and so on. These are things that you cannot uh, try to address by deploying just one particular discipline, the basic sciences or the natural sciences and so on. You really have to uh, employ or deploy a vast array uh, of sciences. Uh, my presentation is going to be more empirical uh, than, than theoretical. Uh, we had some very uh, uh, discussion, very, very heated discussion about this issue of poverty eradication. Uh, uh, just before me, also Julian cast doubt on this question. I think we probably have to come to some kind of consensus before we proceed. Uh, if we say it's extreme poverty, of course, I mean, it makes sense, but poverty has become such an elusive term, a very relative term. Uh, uh, the possibility of eradicating it does not seem to be very much in the near future. Uh, 
but we have to be very clear about it. And uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, the, the debate has, has continued also in this session. Sustainable development, I, I would like to thank Professor uh, Sachs for giving us a very, a very succinct and very helpful definition. And I like particularly the term holistic. I think this is uh, the main thing because coming from Africa, which has seen some of the most remarkable economic growth, uh, we have, I don't, know, I don't know how many countries are in the fastest growing economies category, including my own country, Ethiopia. But of course, I mean, when really translated into the ground, there isn't really much to see in terms of uh, changing the lives of the common people. So there are many issues like uh, uh, the distribution, social exclusion, uh, population dynamics that was mentioned earlier and so on, which make it really difficult to, to uh, equate economic growth with sustainable development. So I think also in that definition, we should really include the political element because governance is an important issue. Yes, social, economic, environmental, but also governance, political. Because most, of the, most, of, most African countries suffer from poor governance, including corruption, uh, authoritarianism, and so on, which makes it difficult to really attain the kind of sustainable development goals that we, uh, we hope to achieve. So I'm going to address uh, this uh, issue from the perspectives of my organization, the Ethiopian Academy of Sciences. Uh, AMASA, which is the annual meeting of African Science Academies, which has been taking place since 2005, and the network of African Science Academies, which has been in existence since two, uh, 2001, and which currently has 21 uh, members. Uh, one of the, the themes uh, every year, the African Science Academies meet to, uh, to discuss uh, on, a, on an important issue that affects Africa. Just a month ago, in November, in Uganda, we had uh, a very lively discussion on the issue of country ownership uh, and came up with uh, a series of recommendations to African governments on the issue of country ownership after, on the basis of a very thorough study uh, of the issue of country ownership in Africa. As you know, I mean, so far the precedence has been that Africa has uh, been uh, more or less forced or urged to adopt uh, a development agenda that is not its own, that comes from outside, whether it is a notorious uh, 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 structural adjustment program of the World Bank or the more benign Millennium Development Goals, these have come from outside. So the issue now is whether Africa does not have uh, to really try to adapt uh, these prescriptions that come from outside its own uh, particular conditions. Uh, this would probably apply also to the SDGs. Uh, so this uh, study that was commissioned by the International Organizing Committee of the AMASA group came out with a very long study uh, with a, number, a series of recommendations, actually, on five, identifying five major levers of development. Community engagement, engaging the traditional communities, uh, other education and health, of course, they are very common. There's nothing new about them. But capital, broadly defined, not only just financial capital, but resource capital, technology capital, and so on, and institutions putting the accent on institutions, not leaders, uh, which is something that Africa lacks. Uh, there are really, uh, most, of, most African countries are really, uh, uh, have very fragile institutions, very fragile institutions which cannot carry the development agenda for a long time. So uh, this is one issue, one of, the, one of the issues that was tackled by one of the, the tens, actually, annual meeting of African academies, which took place very only a month ago in, in Uganda. Uh, another issue that has been very much uh, in, the, in the thinking of African science academies is climate change, which was very uh, eloquently described by Professor, Professor Zucks. Zucks. And uh, it began first with, with the AMASA 8. This is the annual meeting of African science academies. Uh, the eighth one, the eighth edition in Abuja in 2012. Uh, most of these annual meetings come with declarations that are conveyed to the governments so that they could at least 
listen to them. They may not implement them, but at least they could be aware of, they should be aware of them. And the declaration uh, particularly hi highlighted the low emission of uh, carbon gas by Africa, and yet the fact that Africa has or bears a disproportionate burden of these gases, uh, especially with especially impacting negatively on agriculture and health. And it also identified the role of science academies in uh, engaging African governments to cope with uh, climate change. An outgrowth of that is the establishment of the Ethiopian panel on climate change uh, about a year ago, uh, which was very much modeled after the IPCC because it was discovered that the IPCC reports are not always uh, extremely reliable. So to really uh, try to supplement them with uh, findings from local uh, sources uh, by local scientists. So uh, uh, it has been engaging 66 scientists from all the disciplines, including the social sciences, physical sciences, uh, and agricult agricultural sciences, uh, and I could, I could say, I could declare now that actually the first very important meeting uh, to discuss the preliminary report of, the, of this panel was held uh, only about uh, a few days ago, uh, about two, two, two weeks ago. So that what you see there, APCC, be informed, go green, that's uh, the motto of the Ethiopian panel of climate change. Water has been another important preoccupation. Actually, it was one of the themes of uh, the Amasa meetings. I think probably the one in Cape Town in 2007, or I don't know, I'm not quite sure, Michael Click probably would remember it. Uh, so, uh, recently, SANAC, NASAC, this is the network of African science academies, came with a very important document on water uh, and identified uh, or was able to come up with a number of messages, sometimes nine key messages which ought to be conveyed to African governments, including also the African Union. As a matter of fact, if you look at the NASA website, you will see the, the head of uh, NASA presenting the, the document to the uh, commissioner in charge of science and technology of the African Union. So you see the, the messages there, the importance of water, for food, health, and energy, the, really the nexus between the three elements, the need for ac uh, providing access to safe water, water to, and sanitation to poor people in particular, managing transboundary water systems. This is some, one issue that we discussed, uh, uh, a few, uh, I think, two days ago in this meeting, and the issue of financing. Biotechnology is uh, another theme of uh, a conference. This was the theme of the conference that was held in Addis Ababa in November 2013. Uh, you know the, the debate, which is more hit than uh, uh, really risen, uh, particularly the uh, hysterical attack on the introduction of biotechnology. So African Science Academy said, really, we cannot really be taken in by this kind of debate. We really have to examine it scientifically and see if it can be useful. Joachim, I think, uh, was uh, present at that meeting in November 2013. And there was a very free, open debate. Not taking either this side or that side, but really to try to identify what are the benefits of biotechnology. And uh, eventually, as all Amasa meetings uh, do, it came out with a declaration that uh, uh, which some of the main one items of the declaration are highlighted here. I talked earlier about uh, the close connection between the academies leaders and the government political leaders. And in fact, uh, sorry, uh, uh, I think I don't know if I could I could I could manage to. Yeah, here uh, this is the deputy prime minister who was actually a student of one of our fellows. So they, uh, it has helped a lot uh, in terms of really making impact because this declaration was taken seriously by the government and it is currently revising the biosafety laws that have been in force in place for the last uh, 
I don't know how many years, which has been quite restrictive, very honestly restrictive about conducting research, biotechnical research. So now I think there is a possibility that uh, uh, the door will be open for uh, research in these areas. I think the final point, the final uh, has to do with an immediate situation. Uh, kind of, you may think this is an episode, but it shows you uh, what science can do to uh, increase public awareness, to uh, promote an intelligent understanding of an, an epidemic. Because one of the things that you, you, you notice about the Ebola epidemic is the hysteria and the panic that has raised. There is really no rational discussion, no attempt to understand it. Yeah, uh, the other day, our Nigerian colleague uh, told us about the, the quacks that have been making a lot of fortune, you know, killing more people with their concoctions than uh, Ebola has been, do has been doing. So there is a need for public awareness. So, uh, to and science has a role to play in such, in such kind of situations. So the Ethiopian Academy of Science and uh, the Ethiopian Public Health Association, they got together to have a very well attended uh, uh, public discussion in Addis Ababa. Uh, what's very interesting, I, I talked earlier about interdisciplinarity. What emerged from the discussion is the social dimension in particular, uh, the class dimension. Uh, the gender dimension of the Ebola, Ebola epidemic. Uh, and so I think in this ways, well, uh, the African Science Academies have been playing an important role in trying and translating science into policy. And these are one of the things, these are some of the things that we should uh, probably follow in the future, including I think population that was uh, uh, something that has not been uh, properly tackled by African Science Academies. Thank you very much.